Hi guys. I'm going to recommend a documentary, and I hope that you don't get mad at me, but it's a Michael Moore documentary. It's a documentary that I didn't even know was out until a couple of days ago when I watched it. And um, this is not about Michael Moore. And as I was watching the documentary, I felt absolutely just sickened, just sick to my stomach, listening to his voice, looking at his face. But what he was revealing in that documentary is important for people to see. You know, Americans are still kind of living a delusion. You know, that their thinking is delusionary. It's deranged. They actually think that Americans still live a better life than anybody else on the planet. They think their country is still better than any other country on the planet. And that is not true. Um, no matter how bad things get for Americans, no matter the increasing numbers of Americans losing their homes, losing their um, jobs, becoming homeless, uh, no matter how many, and the numbers are increasing of people working, you know, 50, 60, 70 jobs, holding down two, three jobs, uh, 50, 60, 70 hours, sorry, and holding down two, three jobs, even with all of this hardship that Americans are enduring today, they still think that they're living better lives. Just because they're in the freest country in the world, they're living in America, they're living in the United States, and they actually think that people still want to come here. None of that is true. Now, in this documentary, Michael Moore invades other countries and occupies their ideas to bring back to the United States. And as you're listening to people in this documentary, Many of the ideas that have been implement, implemented in other countries were our ideas. We're not implementing our own ideas, but they're working in other countries. You know, and all of you know that it is, there is an agenda to destroy this country. And as far as I'm concerned, so does Michael Moore. But I'll get back to that in a second. But in this documentary, you'll see that he goes to different countries and you know, he's, he's revealing, you know, aspects of that country that are really working. And, and the contrast between what's going on in those countries and America is so great that it really makes you realize how degraded we have become here in our country. How abused, how neglected. We're like traumatized children and our government are our parent. And we just keep taking the abuse. In France, he goes to, I guess, an elementary school. And he's pointing out what they're fed in their schools. And the French students are fed gourmet meals. I mean, people would want them for dinner. Adults would want what they eat in France in these schools, these kids, for their dinner. And then he shows pictures to them, to these students in France, of what American students are eating here in our schools. And they look at it and they're like, you know, trying to figure out what the hell is that? And they're disgusted. They said, no, I wouldn't want to eat that. Our, our, our children here in this country, in our schools, are being fed as if they're dogs. And we put up with it. And parents are putting up with it. He goes to Finland, and he's talking about their education system. And he meets with the teachers and administrators, and they're sitting around talking. And, and uh, the teachers and administrators in Finland are horrified by what's happening in the United States. You know, all you're concerned about is standardized tests. The, the uh, curriculum that they've implemented in Finland, they got from ideas from the United States. Their kids have go to school far less hours than our children. Uh, they have no homework. They get to play. And they get to focus on what they're interested in. The students in Finland are ranked 
number one. Number one. They test out number one for um, all Western countries. What do we rank? What, the high 20s, low 30s? Can't remember. We have a curriculum that is burdening our children. They're saddled with five hours of homework to study for a standardized test. Their critical thinking, it, it's being destroyed. Creativity being destroyed. It, it's like a factory. You know, that's what our school system has become. It's a communist core, common core. Make all kids common so that nobody is exceptional. You focus on, you know, just trying to memorize the answer to a standardized test. All of this, all of this is the production of a slave class for the elite. And Americans put up with it. You know, he goes, I think, to Tunisia, Tunisia, Tunisia. I think I might get the countries wrong. But, you know, their college and university system, free. Free university, free college. And he actually bumps into a couple of American students who, having started here in our country and suddenly racking up debt, they transferred to Tunisia. And it's, they talk about how exceptional is their education as compared to the United States. He actually talks to one of the students and he mentions the word debt. And this young man says, what, what is debt? And what happens here? Y you go for any kind of education, not even the top tiered schools, and you come out and you're a slave to have to you know, work paying back the debt. And most are now just having to go back to their parents' homes because they can't find jobs and they are saddled with the debt. Slaves, we are being made slaves. And I know that you all know this. But Americans have to wake up to what is happening here. He goes to Iceland and he's, he's talking to uh, women. Women have, a, you know, they're in a lot of power positions. Uh, a lot of women are CEOs. And he's talking to one woman. And he says, if you have anything to say to Americans, what would it be? And I can't remember her initial response. But she does say that she would never want to live here. She would never want to live in the United States. She said, why would I want to live in a country where people don't even care about their own neighbors? And you'll hear other people talk about the United States, how mm, they don't want to come here. People don't want to come here anymore because they know the truth about what's happening in this country. Unfortunately, it's the Americans that don't. And I'm not talking to you guys, you know that. goes to, I think, Norway, the prison system. And I'm going through this because I think a lot of you don't, you won't be watching Michael Moore. Um, goes to check out the prison system in Norway. And it's really quite amazing to see. So the prisoners, even murderers, they're treated with love, kindness, respect. They don't have locked cells. They live, you know, in rooms that are like a room in a home. They have TVs. They have art on the wall in the prisons. They work at jobs. A murderer he's interviewing at this prison is a chef. And right behind him are all these knives. And what that reveals is that love is the greatest healing force. And I know that a lot of you know how our prisoners are treated. You know, Americans have this idea that we're kind and compassionate. And it's just an idea. I think they like to think that about themselves because it makes them feel good. But care is a verb. I've said this before. If you genuinely care about anything, then you're going to be demonstrating it through your action. How many people demonstrate 
caring about their neighbors or their family members for that matter. How many people demonstrate, you know, their care about the homeless and how many Americans losing their jobs? We're a joke. The majority of the American people are a joke. And, you know, that interview that I posted a couple of days ago and just a couple of days ago, listening to Michael Moore talk about Hillary Clinton having integrity. This is a woman who has who has been in public service for thirty years and in public service is you know, that that's the code term for the ignorant. You know, oh yeah, that's right. 30 years of public service. Man, that woman is so selfless. She sacrificed so much because she just loves the people. And then he says, you know, she's worked hard for the people. She's going to work hard for people. Bernie Sanders is who he supported. You think Michael Moore doesn't know that Hillary Clinton stole the primary from Bernie Sanders? Do you think Michael Moore doesn't know how corrupt she is? Do you think Michael Moore knows nothing about these emails that we are being flooded with every single day that reveal and prove that everything that he said in that interview is a crock of shit, a lie? That actually what he should have been saying is the exact opposite. Do you think Michael Moore is that ignorant? I don't. I don't. So he has an agenda. He has an agenda. And the truth obviously matters nothing to this man. And that, unfortunately, is the reality of the liberal progressives. I, for one, am really getting sick of it. But, um, you know, the emails that reveal that this woman has contempt for ordinary people, hates the Catholics, you know, reveals that they're actually going after the stupid and ignorant, like Michael Moore. He's not stupid and ignorant. He knows exactly what he's doing. You know, so either he's sold out and getting paid, um, or he's been paid all along, <clears throat> or he's pursuing his own agenda, which is turning this country into, you know, a socialist country, or he's pursuing the agenda of the elites, helping them destroy the country and bring in this kumbaya, new world order, you know, and Turn it over to the United Nations because that's such a loving nation uh, organization, isn't it? So maybe it's not <clears throat> or for all of those choices. Maybe it's and, and, and. But something is very wrong. You know, uh, not just with Michael Moore, but with the large majority of our country who do not give a shit about the truth. don't care. And that is really sad to me. But it's also frightening. Because if you don't care about the truth, destruction's coming. And we're living it now. We're witnessing it. And you know, I also thought, is this guy, could this guy be like a Mark Zuckerberg? Now, I don't think that Mark Zuckerberg had much to do with founding Facebook. It was created by the CIA. I mean, evidence has already come out about that. And I think that they just prop people up who are complete and utter sellouts or they're mind control, you know, controlled uh, people. You know, they become the face of whatever company or organization or documentaries that are put out so that those who are pulling the strings you know are concealed behind the curtain well it wouldn't be surprising to me if it came out that Michael Moore was one of them because he never seemed all that wise and intelligent to me you know and here he is putting out really good documentaries but hell now I've seen youtubers put together documentaries that are on the same level and they're not famous and they're not rolling in dough, but Michael Moore is. You know, it just seems that they might have propped up this guy. 
and you know how they can do it. You know, mainstream media, get them on mainstream media, push these documentaries. And I'm saying this because, you know, for him to come out as a supporter of Hillary Clinton, but to be so dramatic about it and say that she has integrity is really, it's scary. These are not well people. You know, when that woman talked about not wanting to live in the United States, why should she ever want to live in a country where people don't even care about their own neighbors? Michael said, and she said something about, you know, there's so much suffering that, you know, and I don't quote me on this because this is what I'm remembering and my memory seems to be faulty, but the essence was that there are so many people suffering in the, in the United States and it seems like people just don't care. Michael Moore says, I care. And I thought to myself, and I'm going to curse, you fucking liar. I'm so tired of people saying that they care when it's clear that they don't. You know, he lives in his mansion. He flies around on his private jet. He might give to charity. A lot of people give to charity to make themselves feel good, to make, uh, you know, to give the impression that they're good. But he's, what, living in Michigan? I'm sure he drives around, sees all these people suffering. He's got millions, sitting on millions, and he's not helping them as far as I'm concerned. You don't care. And if I had his money, there's no way that I could not act on helping every person I saw. I, I just couldn't let people suffer if I could help them. But these people can and they hold on to their money. So, I'll link below to the trailer. If you want to check it out, forget about Michael Moore. It's not about him. I mean, it, it's about recognizing that the Americans have to change their psyche. They have to finally get that years ago, decades ago, we lived a really good life here, and people actually did want to come to this country. That time is gone. It's gone because now we're living in a police state. We are absolutely living in, in a country that has become a banana republic with criminals just ruling and, and I immediately thought of Hillary Clinton. I think about my former friends. I think about all of these liberal progressives who are still supporting this woman. And I just want to say, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What is morally wrong with you? that you could support somebody who's a liar, who's a criminal, who has sold out your own State Department, who thinks of you as stupid and ignorant. How do you support somebody who has been involved in murders? How do you support somebody who, I mean, just yesterday, I think it was, an email came out that showed that her right-hand woman or women, it was either Cheryl Mills and or Huma Abedin, they would call up the State Departments or whomever in countries, knowing that they had problems, offer the assistance of the United States government or the State Department if they donated to the Clinton Foundation. How do you support somebody like this? How do you support somebody who has a record, a trail of scandals and crimes that go on for years and years and years? How do you support somebody who is now 
once again being investigated by the FBI. How do you do it? How, how is it that with all of you, facts and evidence have just become obsolete? How is it that I spent eight years with all of you, ranting and raving, dinner parties, brunches, lunches, coffees, talking about Bush and Cheney? We were so disgusted with their lies. We were disgusted with their corruption. And then Obama comes into office, and you're not noticing that, well, darken the skin, you know, make them a little taller, and pretty up their speech, and you got the same people, you're not recognizing the lies that are coming out of Obama's mouth, you're not recognizing the corruption that's coming out of our government, you're not recognizing, how could you not recognize? How could you not recognize Obama as a psychopath who's killing innocent people in other countries with his drones? How can you not recognize what is going on? Because the truth does not matter to you at all? How is this possible? I hung around, I hung about with all of you the majority of my adult life. And it's hard to take the betrayal. Of all of you just dismissing the truth that the woman who you want to be your leader is indescribably disturbed, sick, corrupt. Do you know what that says about you? I'll link below to the trailer. Yeah, guys, I get upset. I feel so incredibly betrayed by a whole lot of Americans, but especially by the liberal progressives who just refuse when you lose truth, when you lose honesty in the society, it becomes so sick. It just rapidly descends into just a utter chaos, and that's what we're living. If people just would put truth and justice before all else, there would be a rapid transformation. And it's the people who won't. Their souls have been corrupted, maybe not just as not to the extreme of Hillary Clinton, but they really have to take a look at themselves. How long before this November 8th, what, 10 days out? FBI reopens the investigation. What's going to happen? I still think that Hillary Clinton is actually going to win. Now, it won't be a legitimate win. It will be rigged. And I think that we're going to see riots. No matter who wins, I think we're going to see riots. You know, the insanity in this country has been boiling now to a point that it's just going to explode. And now, for all of the Americans who do see how corrupt Hillary Clinton is, and now the FBI reopens 
its investigation. I don't know. Is some of this deliberate? To just... Then Hillary Clinton wins, and the FBI reopens the investigation. Boy, things are going to explode then, huh? So I'm just wondering if all of this is happening purposefully to get, you know, those Americans who are a little bit more awake or less ignorant than those liberal progressives who are just gone, gone. So unbelievably cemented in uh, the matrix, but, you know, all of those just a little bit outside who could see things. God, Hillary Clinton winning now with the FBI reopening their case with all of this evidence coming in every single day, more and more and more, showing the crimes and corruptions of this woman. People are going to be fucking furious. Trump wins. Liberal progressives are going to go wild. And frankly, they're the more violent. It's true. They've demonstrated it. You know, Project Veritas, all of the violence being committed, you know, against Trump supporters. And by the way, you know, I hate that this is going on, but to those who think that I'm a Trump supporter, I'm not. I posted that video with Michael Moore, you know, his speech in Trump land. Um, and people were writing comments. I knew you'd come around. I'm not coming around. I don't, I don't want this system. I don't want, you know, I, I, I'm not voting. I'm not coming around. You know, the, the videos that I've been posting about Trump, I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to kind of get, is this guy genuine or not? And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not there yet. I don't know. But if he is genuine, I will say that if he gets into office and tries to implement that, this, the New World Order, you know, plans are far along, and they're not going to let him reverse any of it. So they're either going to take him out, or they're just simply going to prevent him from doing a thing. And I've said all along, it's not about one person. It's about the American people. It's our responsibility. It's our duty to do what we feel is right for our country. And this psyche that a lot of Americans have, passing off their responsibility to other people, I voted, so therefore I care, and I'm concerned, and I'm a good American, is all that it takes for them to then sit down throughout the entire year and do absolutely nothing. But they feel good because they went into that booth and voted. Most Americans don't do a thing and want somebody else to fix it. So what I'm saying to you is you need to fix it. We all need to fix it. If Trump actually does get in and we find out that what he is saying, he actually does care enough to do certain things, you know, that he tries to honor what he has been talking about during his campaign, then the American people, those who have supported him, better get behind him and better come out running and better do things, act, you know, support him loud with voices. and action. But look, the entire system is completely and utterly shot. It's so diseased that it's like a malignant malignancy now rippling through every institution. We're dying. Our government needs to die. One person in office, whether it's Trump or somebody like Jill Stein, <laughs> they're not going to do a thing because it's terminal. The disease has gone through and it's just a matter of time before all of this just dies. Trump is not going to be able to do much of anything. It's always been up to the American people. It's always been up to us.
and to get the American people to do anything, to change, those who are most comfortable, they don't change a thing. They just carry on doing the same thing over and over and over again. So, I'm sorry for going on. It's really sad what has happened to this country, and it's really sad what has happened to the American people. <laughs>